Uh, Dan, I was just wondering uh, how close you were and if there was any genuine interest from one of your old clubs in, in Port Adelaide, given you, you wanted to come back home. And I know you're close with the, with a number of people there. No, there was there was no uh, interest um, from uh, there was no discussions with Port about that. Um, they uh, have appointed uh, a, a fantastic operator in person in Stu Graham, um, and and they'll be um, yeah they'll be uh, well pleased with that. But no, there was no discussions between myself and Port. Uh, was it tough to leave Melbourne given the the, the wonderful season uh, the days have have just had, or did that feel like a nice? Uh, closure point for you? Uh, probably both, Josh. It was really tough. You build a, a pretty good bond with people, particularly um, you know, we were away for four months last year in, in a hub in Queensland and then again five weeks um, throughout the final series uh, again. So you, you do build a really strong bond with players and staff. Um, so it was tough uh, to leave Melbourne, but it, it was a fantastic way to go out um, to, to be able to, to help in, in some way to uh, deliver the club a, a premiership. So, um, yeah, it was really tough to leave them uh, and still is a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a good way to go out. Without uh, blowing smoke, what did you contribute to them this year? I know a lot of people internally, at the Demons spoke about your impact and, and I guess we saw the way they were able to run out games, particularly... <laughs> Uh, uh, in the in the one game that matters most, what sort of impact do you think you had there? Um, I think between myself and the the high performance and medical team, um, we were just able to provide the players with some uh, resilience uh, in their in their bodies, some belief in their bodies, um, and just provide uh, Goody and the coaches with um, yeah, with players that were able to execute his game plan. Um, there was no, you know, secret sauce or anything like that. It was just uh, a club that was aligned and um, everybody was, was singing from the same hymn sheet, um, players and staff. So, um, yeah, I don't think there was anything special or anything like that. It was just a, a great team uh, effort, uh, both on and off the field. So uh, it's for others to probably judge or say um, what... That might be specifically, but certainly from what we tried to do as a, as a high performance team was just um, provide players with uh, the ability to run out games and, and the ability to, to be combative, uh, which is the style that Melbourne and, and Goody wanted to play. So, and from a, and from a high performance point of view, what uh, excites you about this Crows list and, and where do you see the, the real areas for growth? Um, certainly, the the uh, youthfulness of the list really excites me. Um, the the two games that we played uh, against against the Crows, their uh, work rate was outstanding. So it's a credit to the the high performance staff that are already at the club and have been at the club. Um, their just their energy and their enthusiasm was just outstanding. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to to getting to know the players and the staff and, and, and help them continue the, the, the rebuild and, and the journey that, that Nixie and the team are on. And just on that improvement point, where do you think um, you, uh, or, and as a high performance team, um, that growth is, is going to come from? There's a natural growth with young, young AFL bodies. Um, and what, what we'll try and do as a staff is just maximise that and, and just leave no stone un, uh, unturned to make sure that the players can achieve their maximum. And that's, that's our job really is, is to do that. So um, I, I don't know the specifics of the list. Obviously I've, I've just come back from Perth yesterday. Um, but what I do know is, is they're a young team with a, a real energy and enthusiasm for work. And I'm, I'm just looking forward to help helping the staff maximise that. Just one last one from me. As an Arsenal fan, I'd be remiss not to ask it, particularly after the North London derby. A bit, bit of a curly one, but but um, your observations of, of of Premier League clubs and how they prepare for a season and during a season versus um, AFL clubs, is there anything that, that one could learn from the other? Oh, certainly. Um, and, and we're lucky at, at Arsenal that we have Tim Parham as well, who's had Premier League... Premier League uh, experience um, with Arsenal. Um, what we can learn is that the body is capable of doing more than perhaps what was traditionally thought in the AFL. The Premier League players, there was players last season who played 80 games 
and the demands on their bodies that they put them through from both a training and game point of view is astronomical. Um, and that's something that uh, I've been able to take uh, away from, from my soccer experience for sure. Thanks, Darren. Cheers. Cheers, Josh. Sorry, who was that shot? Yeah, yeah, I'm up. Yep. Uh, Darren, I'm just wondering how long it takes for someone like yourself to to um, make an impact or make a mark on an AFL list. It, it wouldn't be a quick quick fix. It would take one to two years. Yeah, I think that's about right, Matt. Um, it, it would be it would be silly to go in and try and change everything from day one um, because clearly there's some really good practitioners there, both from a medical and coaching point of view. So uh, a lot of my time early on, I'll be observing how things uh, are done at the Crows and then perhaps uh, trying to, to alter things here or there if, if they're absolutely necessary and, and, and embed myself in the culture that Dixie's trying to create. Um, and then over time, uh, as you say, uh, try and implement any changes if necessary. Um, so yeah, it could be a season or two before um, uh, that, that, that any changes uh, come to fruition for sure. There'll always be one player that gets uh, fans and um, media talking, and that player's often been Darcy Fogarty. Is there changes or improvements you think you can make to, to his fitness levels? Yeah, look, I don't really know the player. I know he played well in the games that we played against him, and, and uh, generally when he when he catches a ball, he kicks it through the big sticks, which is nice. So um, the more often uh, we get Nixie can get him involved in, in the play, um, the better. So hopefully I can help with that. But I, I don't really know uh, where he's at physically. Uh, that'll be the next sort of four weeks. We'll be trying to find out where each player's at and, and connect with each player and trying to, trying to help them out for sure. Not a problem. Thank you. Oh, my You there, Sean? If not, Peter Crocker, sitting in from the Avatar. Hey, Darren, how are you? Um, I guess, Colin, following on from Foggy, is there any one player in particular that you're really kind of excited to work with at the Crows, someone you've identified? Uh, no, I, I, I've really liked um, the, the midfield group and their ability to spread has been been pretty exciting watching from from a distance. Um, it, it's hard for me to comment on individuals just because uh, I've, I've had my hands full uh, with the D's. So um, it's very much more than a full time job. So uh, it's hard to comment on on other players. But yeah, you know, I'm I, I really like um, what Phil Thorpe has been able to do in his first year. It's been quite incredible. So um, he, he'd be an exciting person to to get to work with as well. And just following on from what you kind of said you've learned from your time in the English Premier League, did that kind of thinking about, you know, what bodies, I guess, what bodies can do, the physical, um, I guess, loads they can take, did that kind of, did that thinking come in when you were weighing up um, Stephen May's situation ahead of the grand final? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, and it was probably, um, uh, it was certainly a group decision with the medical uh, team and the coaching team. Uh, as as I, I think um, we said after the game, there's some pretty good research around um, what the mind can, uh, what the body can overcome if the mind believes. So um, we we're pretty confident that that Maisie could get through. Uh, I think you saw he struggled a little bit in the second quarter, but after resetting at halftime, he was outstanding after that. Um, so certainly um, wasn't necessarily the Premier League experience, but there was certainly a bunch of players over there who've been able to play with similar. Uh, injuries that, that that I've been lucky enough to be exposed to. Um, so we're pretty confident that as long as he passed all the tests that we had him pass in the two weeks, um, that he'd be right to go. And, and luckily for the Ds, that's what happened. Yep. And finally for me, I mean, how long has this, I guess, move been in the making for, um, yeah, from Melbourne to the Crows? I mean, when did you kind of make the call, you, you know, you wanted to come back to Adelaide? Yeah, I think um, yeah, anybody with, with kids uh, would know that you want to be around them. Uh, and, and my kids were in Adelaide while I was in Melbourne and, and the borders have been more or less shut for two years. So it's been a, a really rough two years in that front. Um, so there, there's been, I've been trying to explore opportunities with respect to the D's and Simon to 
um, to, to, to get home with the kids once it was clear that the, you know, the borders weren't going to open anytime soon. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's been conversations, um, but uh, in, in reality, when my time at the D's ended, which was, which was this week, uh, that's when everything was, was uh, confirmed. Thank you. Thanks, Simeon. Good, uh, Theo, Channel 7. Hey, Shouts. Hey, Burjo. Congrats on the move. I was just wondering further to um, what you were just talking about then. Could you just, just talk to us about the difficulty you did face in the last couple of years being away from your family and, and how hard it was for you personally? Uh, I'll do that um, without getting emotional with it, Theo. It's, it's just been brutal. And I'm sure there's other families in that situation uh, with borders closed and things like that. Um, but yeah, having, having the kids in a different state and, and, and not being around them daily, um, has been really tough and it's been incredibly, uh, incredibly hard. The support of, of, uh, my partner, Martha and the, and the club, the D's in particular, Goody has been, um, yeah, just, uh, immeasurable. So, um, yeah, it's been really tough two years to be honest. And, and I'm just so excited that, um, you know, when I'm allowed into South Australia, I'll, I'll be um, reunited with the kids. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pumped about that. When will that be, mate? Do you know when you come over to Adelaide? No, uh, I've, I've applied for a, for a permit and, and uh, through SA Health, through all the correct channels, and, and now it's just a, a waiting game. Um, once that gets approved, then I'll do my two weeks quarantine and, um, and then get started. Hopefully, uh, you know, the sooner the better. I heard you say after the um, the grand final win uh, with the AFL.com.au interview that you tried everything you could to stay at Melbourne. Um, was that just in relation to family or were there other sort of components? I mean, if things were different, would you have preferred to stay in Melbourne? Oh, it was just a family situation. Uh, like like any parent, you don't want to be living in a different city to your kids. And, and um, yeah, once, once those avenues were... Um, exhausted, there, there was, you know, only one option. And, and I guess with that interview as well, you know, it was half an hour after winning a flag with with people that you'd spent two years with and, and literally living with for a lot of that time. So there's a fair bit of emotion in that interview. Um, looking at Adelaide's record, I don't think from memory there was a soft tissue injury last year. I don't remember anyone missing through hamstring or calf issues um is that a positive to come into a squad that obviously matt Hass and the guys have done a significant job in preparing them to this level for you i uh, absolutely the, uh, the the job that um uh, that hassie has done and and wall and tim Parham, tim cook and says the doc and um you know it, it's been outstanding uh so i look forward to um learning from them uh what they have done to keep the, the squad in the condition that they have um, and and also, you know, trying to apply anything that I might have to offer uh, as well. But, yeah, it's a real credit to them. And uh, it's credit to the players as well. Is there a bit of pressure that comes with that, Burjo? Yeah, there, there's always pressure. Um, you know, there, I've just come from an environment where a club hasn't won in 57 years. And so there was a fair bit of pressure there. Um, as we, we just spoke about, Arsenal have got you know, on a, the seventh biggest club in the world in terms of finances when I joined them. So it's really pressure there. Um, and, and I know the Adelaide environment and if there were to be injuries and things like that, I know the pressure would come, but um, yeah, that's okay. That, that comes with a job and, and, and in many ways, pressure is a privilege and I'm looking forward to hopefully not having that pressure, but um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, sounds like you're well equipped. Hey, lastly for me, um, could you just talk us through a few of the challenges? I know you've touched on um, the young group, but are there more challenges in working with athletes in their first or second season? Yeah, there, there are. Um, yeah, often those players, and particularly in the current environment where a lot of the Melbourne-based um, players haven't played footy, uh, certainly the, the, the kids that we drafted at the D's, um, you know, Jake Bowie ended up playing in the back half of the season, but it did take them a long time to, uh, to get used to playing um, playing against uh, men and, and actually playing footy. So uh, there is some challenges. Uh, there are some challenges. Um, and it's, it's even the guys that have been playing at a uh, either a Sandfall or under 18 level, 
uh, playing against men um, in in the heat of battle in in AFL, um, yeah, take some adjustment. So yeah, there'll certainly be some challenges. Um, but they're the exciting things about it. They're the things that I genuinely love doing is working with young kids and and hopefully helping them maximise their potential. Thanks, mate. Good luck with the move. Yes, thanks. Jake from Zero Digital Media. Thanks, guys. Um, first of all, Berger, congrats on getting back home, mate. I'm sure you'll be quite relieved. Um, just want to touch on your time at the Ds quickly. One player under your tutelage that went through the roof was Christian Petrarca. And um, what, what was it about the way he prepared or trained that you saw that really helped elevate him to one of the best players in the game at the moment? Yeah, I, I was lucky to come in at a time when um, Track realised that uh, his potential um, needed to be realised um, and, and he just uh, matured as a person. And what he was able to do was uh, every session that he did, whether that was in the gym or on the field, he attacked uh, absolutely 100%. And I mean that. He, he was incredible in every preseason session. So even sessions in December when other people might have been a bit tired or thinking oh, Christmas is coming up or we still got three months till the season started, he dominated. And, and at the end of each session, you know, we'd have a conversation about who was best on ground uh, in each session and he wanted to be in that, in that conversation. And uh, so it really was a credit to him and his ability to attack every single session with, uh, you know, with with that intensity, and you just can't replicate that. You can't expect to train at uh, sub maximal intensity and then play at maximal intensity. It just doesn't work. So that, that that's the main thing that I would say about about track. He was incredible. Yeah, lovely. And with Stephen May, we heard him mention that. Um... He didn't want to know how, how bad his hamstring was uh, heading into the grand final. You spoke a bit about the mental side of this, but how important is that mental side of getting your body prepared or thinking your body is prepared? How important does that mental side play a part in the physical preparation? Yeah, I think one, one thing I've learned um, in working with some of the, you know, I've been lucky enough to work with some, some big, big clubs and, uh, you know, some big players in the soccer front is... Uh, the pressure that are on those players constantly, agents and contracts and media and number of people watching, um, affects their performance and their injury level. So if, if we can take away some of that mental strain that players are, mental stress that players are under, they're able to perform a lot more physically. And with the help of psychologists and, and psychiatrists, um, I've been able to learn a lot in that space. So, um, yeah, I, I think it plays a really big role part and and will continue to play a part in um, not only injury prevention but also performance sort of maximization so yeah it's a, it's a huge area and, and one that's uh you know it's getting a bit more attention as it should and finally finally from me Bergio, um you obviously go from a team right it's prime you know coming to Adelaide who a younger list demographic is it exciting to have a bit more of that black canvas to work with now a new challenge yeah it's, it is um as I said before, yesterday I had a demon's jacket on, walking, getting off the plane next to Max Gorn holding the cup. And today I'm, I'm talking you know, an exciting young list and, and potential and, and the culture that Nixie's trying to create. So, yeah, it's really exciting. It's, um, uh, yeah, I have uh, moved around a little bit over the last 15, 20 years, seeking different challenges. And this one is as exciting as any of the others. Um, I'm... I'm certain this one will be uh, here for the long haul and hopefully I can see these young guys get the success that, um, that we all want. Thanks, Thanks Max. Max. Yeah, Berger, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Everyone's asked all the good questions already. I wanted to ask, um, can I just check your kids? How many kids have you got? How old are they? Two kids, uh, Harry 10 and uh, Millie 9. So in terms of seeing them over the last few years, how much of a chance have you actually had to see them in, in you know, tangible days, I suppose? Uh, yeah, it's over the last two years, not, not a lot. When, when um, there was no border rest restrictions, of course, I saw them uh, a fair bit then. Um, but since pretty much March, um, uh, when, when SA shut its borders, more or less uh, to Victoria, it's been really hard to see them and, and only seen them sort of sporadically in that time. Speak to them, you know, uh, many times. Uh, yeah, it's been been pretty tough. Okay, and I, I wanted to uh, to Melbourne a couple of times and 
And uh, yeah, it's going to be hard to get them to support anybody but the D's or Port because um, that's what they grew up with. So, uh, but I'll work on that. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to ask one for our, our Melbourne guys. They just, uh, going back to the granny, the two weeks, well, I mean, two games in 28 days or whatever it was beforehand from a high performance point of view, where do you where do you sit on it all? How did you get them to that point that they could still perform like that? Does it matter? Do the buyers matter? Just that sort of holistic little two games in 28 days. What do you think? Uh, I suspect um, it may have been that the media had not much else to talk about with a bye week. Um, but if it wasn't, if that's what people believed, we, we were, I remember having a walk um, just by myself and hearing some of the media stuff coming out of Melbourne about one game in 28 days versus the Bulldogs three games. And I started to second guess myself because we were thinking, well, where do we sign up for one game in 28 days at this stage of the season? It, it's fantastic to give the players a bit of a freshen up while still putting them through really hard training sessions. So I started to think, well, maybe all these other people are right and we, me and Goody have got it wrong. But um, yeah, we, we had that belief from the start. We trained incredibly hard and also incredibly combative all the way through the season, which comes with risk. Um, but that's the way that we chose to do it. And um, uh, as it turned out, you know, whether that made any impact, who would know? There's uh, many things that, that contribute to that success, but I'll, I'll sign up again um, to one game in 28 days if, if given that opportunity, for sure. Thanks, Berjo. Good luck. See you soon.